Hey, I'm Colleen Taylor. We're backstage live at TechCrunch Disrupt San Francisco 2012. Sitting with me is a co-founder of Airbnb, Nathan Lacharzik. How's it going? Very good, thanks. You just came off stage with the panel. Alexia moderated. There were a few great people up there with collaborative consumption. Uh, John Zimmer from Zimride, Leah Buskey, TaskRabbit, yourself. Uh, Britt Warren. How, how did it go? I think it went great. I think there was some, some good discussion uh, amongst the moderators and then there's some good questions from the crowd. Yeah. And uh, it's just great to be in front of so many people who um, are interested and engaged in pursuing great ideas. Now often in these panels you don't get to say everything that you've meant to say. Um, is there anything that you had started on or wanted to chime in on that you didn't get to because of well, I think everything that we talked about could go, we could spend a lot more time uh, going into, into more detail. Um, I think the one thing I, I do want to say is uh, regarding disruption, we didn't start Airbnb with disruption in mind, um, but it's the reason why I'll be involved in Airbnb for a very, very long time. I think it makes it such a more interesting and uh, impactful opportunity. Um, cool. Yeah, because you founded Airbnb. We were talking a little bit off state. You know, you're the CTO, you're the technical brains, but then you also do a lot of sort of founder, you know, press kind of things like yeah. this. Do you still get to code at all? No, it's been, it's probably been about a year and a half since I've written production code. Now I'll write code to pull business metrics uh, and do smaller things like that, but it'd be irresponsible of me to be pushing code and then running out to do a press tour in, in Israel or wherever else. Right, so uh, you just, you, you delegate, that's what a, a leader does. Yeah, I don't like the word delegate, but the way I try to make my contribution is sitting individually with engineers or teams and helping them to solve solve problems. So I can I can still be very involved with the lowest level of detail, but I try to be a like a force multiplier versus the the guy who's out there alone in the field uh, making it happen. Now you said something interesting on stage. You said that um, you don't really worry at this stage of the company's growth because you're so big now. You're not as worried about the competition. You yeah. don't really see some big competitors. You know, I don't think there is competition anymore, to be honest. Um, but obviously the, the hotel industry sort of, is that your biggest challenge? So what is your biggest challenge then if it's not another company as a competitor? Well, I still think this is very early days. So there's a lot to do and all that we have to do is the challenge. Um, but I mean, there's two types of quote competitors. One are the, the clones and I don't actually see any competition there right. uh, because of the network effects and because of our product. Secondly, uh, the kind of incumbents, so hotel industry, vacation rental industry. I mean, I think each of these uh, incumbents have a different vision and it's a bit of a different product. Uh, and certainly we are going to play in similar w worlds, but I don't think we're directly competing either. Right. But when, when the regulatory bodies come come along and, and the hotel industry has kind of started to get you yeah. know stressed about you guys in the same way that now the taxi commission is cracking down on Uber. Like how much time do you really spend on policy discussions or politics? How, how much of your manpower is kind of taken up by that at this point? Uh, it's definitely something that we've gotten more proactive about as we've gotten to scale. I think right. we have, uh, we need to do a lot of education to explain how we're similar and how we're different because what happens is uh, regulators, et cetera, they try to put you in the same bucket and say you are this thing and therefore black and white, these are the rules. Yeah. Uh, and it's, there's always shades of gray in there. And we have to spend some time educating them about the benefits and how we're different and how we're uniquely solving these problems. Uh, the regulators are not the innovators. Right. Right. Um, and it's not that we don't want to play by their rules. We just think that the rules need to, to evolve. They were oftentimes made decades earlier yep. uh, with no context of today. Yeah, and you said something interesting offstage that it's a policy at Airbnb. You personally always stay in Airbnbs when you travel. You travel a lot, and every single time, of course. you don't do hotels. You, no. you yeah. No. So all the business travels on Airbnb, and all my personal travels on Airbnb, and I've also hosted many guests uh, in my home uh, back when I lived in Palo Alto. So I had a lot of entrepreneurs staying with me, um, and I never say who I am when I travel. Usually. It comes out over the course of conversation. I'm not going to be misleading, right. but I'm not going to go out proactively say that. Partly because I don't want people to be nervous. Also, partly because I want to have like this experience that a regular person would have. 
And you have 500 people on staff now? That's It's a 500 staff? Roughly. Right. What have you learned as the company has grown? I mean, you started it just, you know, with three, three of you, four of you. Um, three, three. Three founders. Three founders. It, and it's grown so much. What is there one big lesson that you've learned if you were going to give someone else advice of, of scaling up a company so quickly? Yeah, it's certainly challenging uh, and it's we're doing it for the first time. One of the things I'm most thankful that we've done is um, kind of establish our core values um, before we actually hired our first employee. And we've used this set of core values to evaluate every single employee up through now. So all, say, 500. Right. Um, and because we've done that, we have a really, I'm going to say homogenous group. And I mean that they're like-minded individuals that function well together and we work well as a team. Uh, so I would say, you know, establish your core values early on and make sure you don't lose that cohesiveness as, as you grow. Because I think that's what happens when you enter hyper growth mode. It's, it's really easy to say, hey, our business is exploding. We have to hire these people and to start taking shortcuts. Yeah. And we've avoided doing that. And I think uh, we're benefiting because of it. Yeah. And last question I want to ask. Um, you guys, obviously, TechCrunch has, has given you some good and sort of bad press. Do you feel like Airbnb has had actually, I feel, I feel like you guys get criticized in the press maybe more than other startups. Is there a re why do you think that is? Um, how, do you have any, any kind of feeling of? Uh, I think the press just likes to build you up and tear you down. Mm -hmm. uh, we're obviously high profile, and so that works both good and bad. Um, I think, frankly, it's, it's fine when people say negative things. It keeps us, keeps us honest, it challenges us. Um, like I said, last summer up on stage, that was, of course, a challenging time for us. Yeah. However, we came out of it being a much stronger company, and we learned something about the importance of being proactive. And that this was actually a real opportunity uh, to further um, differentiate ourselves, and that this was something we were going to have to just, it was going to be an ongoing thing. Um, so hadn't there been all that pressure, maybe we wouldn't have learned the lesson as, as strongly. So. You Has know, it changed how you how you personally, you know, when you view media or when you read press? Has, has your experience, you know, being at Airbnb, the subject of so much press, has it changed the way that you look at things? Uh, things being like in the... Things that maybe you read in the press or... I'll just say in general, like, it's, it's often about education and yeah. communication of ideas. So whether it's regulators or press yeah. or whatnot, it's about just explaining like what I'm seeing and what I think the issues are and understanding what someone else is seeing and having a constructive dialogue about that. Uh, and if you view it as such, then these conversations are, are straightforward and enjoyable. Well, Nathan Bocharzik, thank you for coming backstage with us. Thank Sitting you. in that chair just maybe an hour ago was Jack Dorsey, who I got to talk to. And I think we're gonna roll that tape right now.